How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at practice problems for reaction mechanisms. Objectives, there they are, right? Identify catalysts and intermediates. An overall reaction given elementary steps for reaction. Describe the molecularity of a chemical reaction given their elementary steps. Determine the rate law for reaction mechanism with slow first elementary steps. And also determine the rate law for reaction mechanism with a fast first elementary step. So, number one. We got a mechanism for the making the product X below. What is the intermediate? So intermediates get made and then used. So we're looking for something that's not in the reactants or products. So if you take a look, well, what's being made in the first step? We're making Z and D. And then in our second step, D is getting used up. So this is going to cancel out. Our overall reaction is going to be Y plus B makes Z plus X. Where is the D in those equations? It's nowhere because it is an intermediate. There you go. Number two, for the elementary reaction below, there it is. What is the molecularity of the rate law? So, and the rate law, I'm sorry. So molecularity is basically how many molecules are involved in that elementary step. So if I take a look, there's one, two. So molecularity is what we call bimolecular. Right, bi means two. Bicycle, you got two tires, right? Um, and the rate law would be, hey, the rate equals, when we're dealing with elementary reactions, the coefficient in front becomes the exponent in our rate law. So the rate law equals K times the concentration of NO3 to the first power, right? There's a one there, times the concentration of CO to the first power as well, because it is an elementary reaction. Here, the coefficients become the exponents. Number three, a possible mechanism for the overall reaction, this, is these two things. What is the rate law for the formation of NOBr based on this mechanism. So if we take a look, this reaction rate, uh, this equilibrium in the first step is fast. So if I were to do the rate for that, we go, hey, the rate on the one side uh, equals K times, well, let's see, the uh, concentration of NO to the first power times concentration of Br2 to the first power. And because we got this double arrow thing going on, it's telling us there's an equilibrium. So there's also a reverse reaction, which tells me that for the reverse reaction, it's gonna be K to the minus one, right? This thing, times concentration of NO Br2. And those two things are equal to each other. Uh, but it's our first step and it's a fast one, which means it's not gonna be a rate determining step. You know, if you're cooking in the kitchen and you're trying to make grilled cheeses, uh, it doesn't matter if you can get the bread out really fast, you know, if your partner's unwrapping your single serving cheese things and that's taken forever, that's not going to be, uh, you getting the bread out is not going to determine how quickly things can go. So you look, the second step is the slow step. So the rate law for the second step is going to be some constant times concentration of NOBr2 times concentration of NO. Now the issue is this NOBr2 is an intermediate. So it's not actually in our overall reaction anywhere. So we can't say, hey, the rate law for this equation is K times the concentration of something that's not even in the reaction. It's an intermediate. So we gotta, we gotta take a look at this first fast step and solve for the concentration of that intermediate in terms of the other stuff. So if I wanted to get NOBr2 by itself here, I got to divide the other side by k to the minus one, as well as this side by k to the minus one. So now we have the concentration of the intermediate NOBr2 is equal to that k1 times NOBr2 divided by k to the minus one. So now I can substitute this in to that equation. I get my rate equals, uh, K2 times, well, NOBr2, I'm saying, is this whole thing. So times K1 times NO times Br2 divided by K to the minus one times by NO from over here. 
Now, these Ks are all just numbers. So we don't have to, you know, when you multiply them all together, you get just some number K. Now, let's see, we got NO times BR2 times NO. So that NO is gonna end up to the second power squared times BR2 to the first power. So because we had this intermediate in our first fast step, uh, we, you know, we had to use it to get rid of the intermediate in our slow second step. You know, you can't have intermediates in your rate law. All right, number four, the mechanism of a reaction shown below. What is the overall reaction? All right, so when you need the overall reaction, you gotta just kind of add all those things together and cancel out anything that you can. So let's see. I got NO, NO on this side. I don't have any NOs over there. So I have two NOs plus, well, let's see, N2O2s. Um, well, there can't cancel. Oh, wait a minute. There's an N2O2 here and an N2O2 here. So they cancel out. What about H2s? I only see the ones on the left side. So I got two H2s. Um, well, let's take a look. Uh, what about N2Os? Oh, hey, wait, here's an N2O and there's an N2O on the opposite side. So they cancel out. All right, now let me double check on my right side of the equation. I got H2O here and here, and I can't cancel it out anywhere, so I end up with two H2Os. And what about this N2? Uh, I don't see anywhere to cancel out, it's the only one, so boom. And now I can check. Well, I got two Ns, I got two Ns. I got four hydrogens, I got four hydrogens. I have two oxygens, I have two oxygens. Awesome, so everything's balanced. So that's the overall reaction. I did it right, yay. Which compounds is or are the intermediates? All right, well, we said that N2O2, here, let me clean this up. N2O2 is made in the first step and used up in that second step. So that is an intermediate. It's not in our final equation as well. Uh, let's see, N2O is made in the second step and used in the third step. So that's also an intermediate and it doesn't show up as a react in our product. And I think those are our only intermediates. Now it says predict the rate law based on this mechanism. So we know that the second step is the slow step. So the rate is gonna be determined based on that. The rate is gonna equal K times N2O2 times H2. But hey, wait a minute, this N2O2 is an intermediate. I can't have that. So I wanna look to the first step, figure out, all right, I got this double arrow, which means that the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse are equal. So the rate has to equal some K times NO squared, which has to equal K for the reverse reaction times N2O2. So divide each side by K to the minus one. It's just a number. So we're just gonna, you know, combine all those constants and call it one big constant. So the concentration N2O2 is really all of this. So now I plug it in. My rate equals K times, well, N2O2 is K1 over K to the minus one times NO squared, and then the H2. Now, all of these are just numbers. So rate equals some constant times NO squared times h2 to the one there you go that's it all right hope you found it helpful see you in class goodbye